So here we've got this girl standing in her kitchen and if you wanted to cut her out of the background, I'm sure you would be pretty frustrated at first because her hair is so similar to the background that you can't really even tell where one ends and the other begins. But I'm gonna show you a super simple quick technique to cut out this subject from the background and it's gonna look perfect. Her hair is gonna be perfect, super easy. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is Control J to duplicate the layer. So we're working non-destructively and then I'm just gonna hide the original background layer. So on this layer, I'm gonna come up to my contextual taskbar. If you don't see that, go to Windows and scroll down to contextual taskbar. So I'm going to hit remove background. Even though Photoshop did a really good job, it missed the edges of her hair and it might have missed even more on the edges of the hair in your image. Either way, the technique you're going to learn will work. With the technique I'm going to show you, it's really important to go ahead and put your subject on the new background before we start really fixing the hair. So you can import your new background at this point, or for me, I'm just going to add a solid color background. So I'm going to click on solid color, and then I'll just choose a nice bright color so you can see what we're doing. Now at this point, I'm going to merge my two layers. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on both my subject and her new background right click and select merge layers. So now they are merged into one single layer. What I'm going to do next is use a quick mask. If you're not familiar with quick mask, it's this icon right here below the foreground and background colors. Double click on that icon and you'll get this window. Make sure that you have selected areas selected and then the default of red is fine. Click OK, and I'm going to show you how Quick Mask works. Notice that when I clicked OK, this layer turned red. That is my indication that we are now in Quick Mask mode. So what I'm going to do is zoom in to one of the parts of her hair that needs to be fixed. With my brush tool and a black foreground selected, I'm just going to brush across that area and let go. Now I'm going to hit Q for Quick Mask and everything I just brushed over is now a selection. With this selection, I'm gonna come up here and click on Generative Fill and just type in Hair. Click Generate. And look what a great job that did. Here's a before and after. So just like always, you get three options to choose from. Here's option one, two, and three. They all look great. I think I'm gonna go with option one. So again, I'm gonna demonstrate that. Now for the next, selection of hair, make sure that you've clicked on your original layer again. Again, hit Q for quick mask. You see the layer has turned red. That means quick mask is activated. And again, I'm going to go up here with my brush tool and black selected. I'm just going to brush over another very small area. If you just brush over a small area, you don't have to worry about the resolution not being good. The resolution will match your image if you just work in small little chunks. Q for quick mask, it becomes a selection. Click on generative fill, type in hair, generate. And again, we have one, two, three options. If you don't like any of those, you can always just hit generate again for three more options. In this case, I don't like any. And not only that, I feel like Photoshop isn't really grabbing from her real, true, actual hair. So I'm gonna get rid of this second layer. And this time I'm gonna change my settings a little bit. So I'm gonna go over to the quick mask icon, double click, and we had red selected before. Watch what I'm gonna do. Now you know in Photoshop, black conceals, white reveals. So it makes sense that something in between black and white would be more of a transparent selection. So it wouldn't fully conceal, it wouldn't fully reveal, but it would be transparent. So I'm gonna choose a middle gray color instead and click OK. What that's gonna do is create a transparent selection so that Photoshop can sort of see through and use my image as a reference image. So it's gonna use her hair as a reference for creating the new hair. Now that gray is my color, it's harder to see, but this actually did turn a different shade of gray instead of red. So once again, with my brush tool, I'm gonna brush over a small area. This time it's gray, it's a transparent selection, and Photoshop is gonna use her own real hair to generate some new hair. Same thing, Q for quick mask, type in hair and generate. And I think that did a much better job this time. Again, we've got three different options, one, 
two, and three. I like option one. Now, do you see this part right here? There's a little bit of an edge where you can see that something happened. This is why I told you to make sure that you've placed your subject on its new background before fixing the hair. If I hide the background, these selections are not transparent. So wherever I paint it over, that entire thing is a selection and that's showing up right here. So because it's not transparent, if I did all of this work and then put her on the new background, this part would also go on to the new background, which obviously we don't want. Now these little areas are super easy to fix. It's a mask just like anything else. So I'm gonna mask that area off right there. So now I'm just gonna move on to another section of hair that needs a little work. Right here, her hair is completely cut off. So again, I'm just going to come down to my original layer, hit Q for quick mask, grab my brush tool, make the selection, Q again, Again, it's transparent. It's using her hair as a reference. One, two, and three. I like three, and I'm just gonna keep traveling around her hair and making selections where they're needed and fixing those edges. Now, I understand a lot of people are uncomfortable with the fact that this is AI, and obviously it's not her real hair, but I think about the fact I've been using Photoshop now since 2012, so quite a few years. And back then, and even up until very recently, the way we had to do this was with a brush, and we would have to manually brush in each strand of hair. That would take hours, and now we've got this at our disposal. The result is the same. In both situations, it's not the real hair, but Photoshop doesn't have the pixels to draw from when the hair is exactly the same color as the background. So until Adobe comes up with a better way to do this, I think this is an excellent option and I'm happy to use it and take five seconds to do what used to take an hour. Now I just want to show you one more quick way that you can use this. So again, I'm just going to hit Q for quick mask and again, double click down here just to make sure my settings, I'm good with the red this time. I'm going to click OK. Now let's just say you want to create maybe just a few strands of hair. All you have to do is pretty much the same thing. Make sure your background is black always, and then click on your brush tool. Again, quick mask, it came off of quick mask, so make sure that's selected. And then all you have to do with your brush tool is make sure that it's tiny, like a strand of hair, and then just brush where you would want some strands of hair to be. And each one of those brush strokes will become a selection. So quick mask again and see how each one is now a selection. I'm gonna type hair and generate. And we've got three options again. There's option one, two, and three, and it just created some very subtle strands of hair. Okay, so that is it. I hope this video was helpful. Please ask questions in the comments and also feel free to answer each other's questions. I want this to be a channel where there's open discussion, questions and answers, and everybody just helps everybody out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.